I'm going to show my poster, which is uh, about the tentative detection of one uh, uh, molecule, HCl+, in the diffuse clouds. It, is, it has been observed with uh, uh, Herschel space spacecraft, and uh, you can see here the, uh, this structure is, is due to the absorption of HCl+. What we do is to observe one uh, source that uh, emits strong lights and uh, depending on uh, uh, the, uh, this light coming from the source is absorbed by the interstellar clouds and depending on the, at which frequency it is absorbed we can decide which molecule uh, it is. Uh, this molecule is particularly interesting because we, we have detected also our other molecules that are linked to this, but uh, this was missing, so this was one, uh, one of the uh, bridge points that was, was uh, still missing. Still we have to, to be sure that it is exactly this molecule, so we have done also some modeling to, to confirm that it, it is exactly this molecule. And uh, it seems uh, it will be the first time that we observe this molecule in the interstellar medium. My research is focused on photoprocessing of ices. So I'm working in the second laboratory for astrophysics where we are interested in how uh, interstellar analogs behave with UV photons uh, coming from background stars or uh, uh, protostars. So what we've been doing here is to investigate how the wavelength of the UV photons are affecting the way molecules are kicked out from the ice. So for this we need uh, heavy uh, uh, experimental uh, um, uh, techniques. So we're using surface science techniques uh, coupled to uh, synchrotron uh, radiation. So using the Soleil uh, synchrotron where we irradiated ice analogs to measure how much the photodesorption yield uh, is changed by uh, the energy of the photons used to irradiate our ices. And this is the results that we get, is that uh, photodesorption is actually very structured and it actually depends on the structure of our ice. As photons are absorbed, you observe photodesorption of molecules. And this is an interesting result because you don't have the same UV emission in different astrophysical environments. So for example, if you take uh, ices that are at the edges of molecular clouds where you, the UV emission is flat, you're going to get a high photodesorption rate. So a lot of molecules that comes out are the grains for photons compared to what you observed in protoplanetary disk where the emission is basically centered here where you have minimal photodesorption of CO molecules. My work is about uh, the turbulence in the interstellar medium, so basically uh, the gas between stars in our galaxy. And the idea is that um, our galaxy is not static. There is a lot of dynamical events. Uh, when the star forms, there is uh, the ejection of matter, and when they die, they explode, and there is also the galactic rotation. So all those stuff are uh, uh, a lot of dynamical processes that inject energy in, uh, in uh, the interstellar medium, so in the gas in our galaxy. And what we are dealing with is uh, to try to understand how this energy is dissipated, because when uh, we want to form stars or planets or whatever, or denser environment, we need this energy to dissipate. So basically our current understanding of the process is that this energy is dissipated in small structure, uh, small structure at the galactic space, uh, scale, sorry, but uh, big structure at our scale because uh, the typical uh, size of a tornado is about uh, the solar system scale. So, um, what we want also to understand is uh, how we can um, observe this kind of dissipation from Earth. So, basically, in this 
red spot here where the turbulent energy is dissipated, the gas is heated because you, put, you transform the mechanical energy in, uh, in temperature. And when you do so, you uh, activate a completely different chemical network. So here is the chemical network you have outside the tornadoes, and here is the chemical network you have inside the tornadoes. So uh, you see that the chemical network changed completely, and that new molecular species are produced by this red spot here. So all we have to do now is to uh, observe this kind of species, this kind of molecules, and to try to uh, 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 compare what we can deduce from the observation, the quantity of molecule, uh, with, what we, with, with what we are predicting from the models. So basically, with the Herschel Space Telescope, we observe several uh, uh, lines, molecular lines. So basically, you, you observe the photon that comes to you, and if there is matter between the photon and you, the photon is absorbed, and you have absorption lines here. Okay? And from this, you can deduce the chemical composition of the gas, and you compare this chemical composition with what you predict with the models. And uh, the current result is that uh, there is a good agreement between what we predict, the chemical enrichment due to the turbulent dissipation, and what we observe.